Welcome back to the Market Insights webinar. This is Kevin Prince from BMO Exchange Traded Funds. Looking forward to giving you some insights towards the overall market, but specifically around exchange traded funds. Our topic today is asset allocation. We had a lot of questions come in, in the past about asset allocation ETFs, and we're going to spend today's session all about that. And I will say one big thank you to all of those out there that send in regular questions, because not only do we want to answer them in the show, they drive our content on a regular basis, and that's the outcome of today's session. So let's get into it. Number one, disclaimer. We're not going to provide specific advice, nor are we going to provide specific recommendations. We will provide you some insights in general across the market, and specifically, again, one more time, tied to ETFs. And I'll say this one more time on behalf of InvestorLine. They're joining us here today, too. InvestorLine will not provide you specific advice, nor recommendations, but really showcasing some of the tools and some, uh, some of the uh, offers for the marketplace. Let me bring in my guests. Oh, before I go to my guests, why do we want to talk about asset location? Beyond, of course, the questions coming in today, certainly we've seen a trend of flows and so has the industry. So what do you see in here? This is a quick snapshot of assets flowing into ETFs as of the September 2021. And thank you, National Bank, for the report. It's a key industry one we all look at. And inside here, you're seeing significant growth. See multi-asset, you're seeing significant growth in asset allocation ETFs. So there is a trend towards these all-in-one basket solutions and that's another reason why we decided to spend some time today to dive into them what do we mean when we say asset allocation tests we'll give you all that information by the end of the show now again let's bring in our guest danielle returning us from bmo exchange traded funds and dominic also returned us from bmo investor line now dominic can you kick this off with a little bit of offers from bmo investor line please Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kevin. So uh, every time BMO Investor Line is on this uh, this recording, we sorry these uh, these live sessions, we definitely want to offer our clients uh, some promotional offers. So we are not only looking at the self-directed offers, but also those of Advice Direct, in which we are the only institution that offers an advice-assisted platform. So let's look at the self-directed offer. The self-directed offer right now is we're going to be offering four ninety-five on equity trades and non-commissioned ETF trades. And of course, the way that the clients could benefit from that is on the left-hand side of the screen. They just need to click on that link, open up a new self-directed account with that promo code, and the 495 trade will be applied on the uh, equity trades. Now, in regards to Advice Direct, uh, any new accounts that will be opened with Advice Direct can get up to $2,500. And of course, this offer is eligible between October 4th uh, until the 31st of December. And just by using that digital 22 promo code, uh, the client does need to fund the account with at least $10,000. Uh, and again, we have uh, the terms and conditions in which the client needs to maintain those assets until June 30th of 2022. So uh, Kevin, let's just go to the next slide and take a deeper dive in regards to that advice direct tool that we were talking about it. As we're focusing on asset allocation, uh, we just wanted to take a quick print screen of what our uh, Advice Direct tool will offer our clients, especially when we're looking at ETFs. And uh, we do have certain filters in regards to ETFs, uh, not only based on, uh, of course, the location, but if you take a deeper dive and look at the asset allocation of the fund, you'll also see the asset mix, geographic mix, and of course, the sector allocation uh, and here we're using the ZESG ETF, of course, the BMO Balanced ESG ETF. On the right-hand side of the screen, we'll also see the top holdings uh, within this specific ETF. So this is one of our tools that is offered through our Device Direct platform uh, and uh, will easily, will, uh, excuse me, assist the client in, in taking that proper investment decision by having that overview. Let's go to the next slide, Kevin. Now, uh, of course, we are always staying competitive in our market, right? So when we're looking at the self-directed offer through BMO Investor Line, we've actually uh, analyzed and assessed uh, certain ETFs, and we chose the top three Canadian providers, of course, BMO Exchange Traded Fund being one of them, followed by iShares and Vanguard. Now, we chose these top three providers based on assets under management, and we are uh, giving 
our clients uh, free commissions on ETF trading. There's approximately 80 of them by asset class. Again, focusing on that asset allocation factor through equity, fixed income, multi-asset, ESG, and thematic. So when we're looking at uh, the, uh, the trades that we're offering regarding specific ETFs, these are trades that are not to be uh, actively traded. We're really looking at uh, a couple of days of holding these ETFs. So if someone is using the self-directed platform in order to trade ETFs, uh, we, we will charge the client the fee. It is more of a uh, buying and holding for rebalancing purposes. And I'll take uh, a couple of uh, moments to further describe that in a couple of slides. Next slide, Kevin. So uh, focusing on the asset allocation and some of the commission-free ETFs that we offer, uh, these are some of the top picks currently uh, in regards to the asset allocation. So you'll see them uh, by, uh, of course, uh, institution, BlackRock, BMO, and Vanguard. So if we focus on BMO, we'll have the Zgro, Zbal, of course, ZESG, and Zcon as some of our asset allocation uh, ETFs. And the last slide here, uh, as I was mentioning, the zero dollar commission per ETF trade is really for clients that are looking at setting up a portfolio or transitioning some of their portfolio, rebalancing uh, their portfolio, as well as uh, managing the risk, making some tactical adjustments within that self-directed platform. Of course, clients that are looking to make uh, regular contributions and offering that full diversification, not only through the ETF, and the holdings within the ETF, but also allowing the clients to further diversify their portfolio using other ETF products. So if we go on to the next slide, for any clients uh, or anybody that is interested in finding out more or getting some additional information in regards to our promotional offers or our platforms, the benefits of our platforms, BMO Investor Line is here to help empower and empower you as a Canadian investor to achieve your dreams. So please don't hesitate to reach out and uh, we, can we can have a further conversation by phone or, of course, by email. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Dominic. Great to have you on again. So let's move into the core topic today. As Dominic mentioned, off the ass location is our topic today. And thank you for the examples of free trading around that. So. The other aspect we're certainly seeing about ass allocation ETFs is that you're certainly seeing them in the news a lot. And certainly because they offer that one ticket diversified solution. So when you see asset allocation news or you see a ticker like Zed Bow or Zed Con or Zed Grow or any other ones out there, this is what we're referring to when we talk about asset allocation ETFs. Now, Daniel, come join us for the conversation, please. Um, let's talk about what an asset allocation ETF is. Can you walk us through that at a higher level, please? Sure, Kevin, and thanks for having me. It's always great to be here on a Friday afternoon. So an asset allocation ETF, this is an all-in-one investment solution. It's a globally diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds, and investors can use this kind of ETF to access um, global equity and bond markets with the efficiency of a single trade, all within a single ETF. It is a very low cost structure because it holds ETFs. It's priced very competitively. You know, at BMO, ours are 18 basis points and some is at, are 20 basis points. So that's very, very low. That's 0.18 of a percent or 0 0.20 of a percent. Uh, and, and like I said, this is an ETF that holds um, other ETFs within it to give you that full globally diversified portfolio all under, um, all within one ETF. So there's a number of different asset allocation ETFs uh, along the risk spectrum. So we can start at an all fixed income asset allocation ETF. There's all equity asset allocation ETFs. And then the bulk of the most popular ones are the ones that do offer that mix of both equity and fixed income. And you get a conservative portfolio, a balanced portfolio or growth portfolio. And we'll talk about this in a, in a bit, but there's also ESG asset allocation ETFs where investors can combine those two really big themes of wanting that um, all encompassing exposure of an asset allocation ETF with that ESG overlay. 
So these are very, very efficient and powerful tools for investors to use for portfolio construction and get broad market access. Kevin? So as I mentioned about, we're, you certainly seem to be being very popular in the media. Like, why are they so popular, Danielle? Talk to us about some of the key benefits that people are, are, are getting out of these new all-in-one solutions. Right. So first of all, you get all those same amazing benefits that you do with a, a regular ETF. So you get that efficiency. You can buy and sell them very easily. You get that diversification. So asset allocation ETFs actually hold over a thousand or more than that, like 5,000 different um, stocks and bonds within a single ETF. So that diversification is, is really key. Uh, the liquidity. So these trade uh, on the exchange, investors can buy or sell them at any time. They trade it with very tight spreads. And then that transparency so that knowing for investors exactly what they're invested in at all times, they can look up the top holdings on all the ETF provider uh, websites and see what they're investing in. But then asset allocation ETFs, they kind of take these benefits even a step further. So when you're building a portfolio using traditional ETFs, typically with each ETF, you get exposure to uh, a single asset class. So for example, you can buy an S&P 500 ETF and it's diversified and it's transparent. And it's all those great things, but you're only exposed to large cap US equities. And then, so if your goal is your, that you want to build out a complete balanced portfolio, you're going to have to combine several different ETFs together. And then you're going to have to figure out, well, what's that optimal mix for you, which is unique to each investor, between the asset classes using various ETFs to achieve this. And then you're going to have to monitor your portfolio to keep that asset mix in check, which requires a lot of rebalancing, um, which is a chore for a lot of investors. And if you're not rebalancing, um, your asset mix will soon be quickly off the mark and you will be probably taking on more or less risk than you initially wanted to. So that rebalancing, uh, which is done automatic with asset allocation ETFs is such a huge benefit as well, Kevin. Oh, perfect. You know, I'm going to get a good slide coming up on, on, on rebalancing some of the benefits of that. One quick thing here, it says lower cost. What are the kind of the cost structure we're talking about with these asset allocation ETFs? Right, good question. We get this a lot from investors. So this isn't uh, double dipping. So when you see the price or the management fee of the ETF is 18 basis points, that is the, the only thing you'll be paying. That's the management fee. You'll have the MER, which is probably a few more basis points higher than that. You are not paying another fee for all the underlying ETFs. I think that's very important to make. There's no double dipping. The fee you see on the asset allocation ETF is the fee that you pay. Ah, good point. Thanks for, thanks for going into that in more detail. Hey, let's talk about one of the key aspects when you think about asset allocation. And that, of course, is what it means for both volatility and performance. I've known you've taken a lot of industry courses here, Danielle. Talk to us about these key studies and what that means for investors. Absolutely. So let's just take a quick little step back. When we're talking about asset allocation, this really just means how much am I going to allocate to each asset class? And this is different for everyone. This depends on a lot of different things. Their risk tolerance being one of the most important things to look at. Their income needs, you know, some investors looking for monthly cash flows or more stability, others looking for more growth. And then time horizon is another important consideration. So you're looking at how much do you want to allocate to equities, which is which are the riskier asset, asset class or fixed income, which are lower risk, but provide less growth. And then of course, cash is also there as an asset class. So Kevin, this decision that investors make, this very first decision, this asset allocation decision that is the key driver of long-term performance in a portfolio. It's way more important than the actual stock picking you might do, uh, whether you're in equities or fixed income or cash, and the different weights you've decided between those three things is going to drive your portfolio performance. So this is the number one thing investors need to decide or really need to think about when they start going out and buying stocks and buying ETFs is where do they want to sit 
on that risk um, spectrum. And with asset allocation ETFs, we can make that decision a lot easier for investors. They can decide, do I want to be 80% equity and 20% fixed income? Or I prefer more defensive, I'd like 60% fixed income, 40% equities. And then of course, with that rebalancing, always keeping things in check, making sure things don't get out of whack. Perfect. You know, one of the things you mentioned earlier on is the diversification with inside these portfolios. Yes, you're holding different ETFs, but talk to us about what that means about securities with inside of a inside one of these baskets of baskets. This is probably one of the most diversified products on the market. And when we say diversification, we're really talking about um, keeping that risk in check and smoothing returns. You know, if you think about buying a single stock. Um, theoretically, that stock can go to zero dollars. When you have 500 stocks in a portfolio, they're not all going to go to zero. The probability of them all going to, to zero is much, much smaller. And then, of course, with an asset allocation ETF, you're really broadening out. You're holding, you know, you see here on the slide, over 1,300 uh, bonds in the Canadian market. You have over 500 large cap U.S. equities. Uh, Canadian equities, you have over 200, and you can see here just how diverse that is. And I will say it's not easy to go out and, for, first of all, buy this amount of stocks and keep that in check. That's the institutional level portfolio management uh, for sure. Um, but you also can't, it's really difficult to buy outside of the Canadian market, and you can't buy bonds either. You need to be using a, a fixed income ETF for access to bonds. So. Uh, just a couple other of those key benefits to highlight there. Oh yeah, I think the bonds, if fixing ETF yeah, definitely makes those bonds more efficient to get access to the marketplace. Now, interesting, when you look at the basket here, sometimes like an S&P 500 or, you know, equities will be outperforming or, or and sometimes fixed income will be outperforming. Maybe we should talk a little bit about rebalancing the benefit of that, which is with inside an asset allocation ETF too. Talk to us about this, please. Sure. So this portfolio thing we're saying about portfolio maintenance or portfolio rebalancing, this is kind of like a chore for investors. It's not the um, the the most fun part in portfolio management. I'd say I think investors think it's it's really exciting to pick a couple stocks or pick some ETFs and watch their portfolio grow, but they don't think about this rebalancing part. But it's a very very important driver of not only our portfolio returns, which I think everyone is very focused on, but also how much risk you're taking on. And I think um, this is something really important investors always need to remember when they're managing portfolios. It's not just about returns, it's about managing risk as well. So when we're investing, it's everything's about optimizing returns to match your unique risk profile. And then, so what happens over time as markets are moving, uh, your portfolio portfolio allocation is going to start looking a lot different in three months from now or a year from now than it would look if you were to start it today or invest today. Uh, and so what happens is when equity markets are rising, like we've seen over the last uh, year, equities, equities are going to outperform fixed income. So naturally your equity positions will be larger than you've initially set them. In this scenario, then you'd be sitting on a lot more portfolio risk than you perhaps intended on taking because equities carry more risk than fixed income. And then on the other side of the coin, when markets go down, like we saw in March and April of 2020, your fixed income positions are going to outweigh your equity. And then you need to rebalance by selling some fixed income and buy equities. Uh, and then you'd need to do that in that scenario to keep that optimal asset mix in check. So this is a very tricky and time consuming process. And the asset allocation ETFs, it just takes this, this chore off your hands. You don't have to think about it. You have the peace of mind that the risk that you've set yourself will always be in check. Um, and they really, this asset allocation ETFs just really address this issue very well. Like leave it to our portfolio managers. It's their full-time job to be you know, rebalancing and, and main, monitoring these ETFs so people can not have to worry about that asset allocation um, getting out of check. And on this slide is a really good visual of kind of what I'm speaking about here. If we look at the data, we're seeing that frequent rebalancing actually 
added an annualized 1% return to each portfolio over this 17 year period. So just another really huge benefit with asset allocation ETFs is that automatic rebalancing um, that keeps that initial asset allocation mix in check. Yeah, I, I, you, well said. I think what you're really getting here, effective, is you get to avoid that drift in your portfolios. So you're sitting exactly to a huge target asset mix. But you know, it's interesting to look at the you know studies and shows. Well, there's a value add from this, and frankly, the value add is actually exceeding the cost of the ETF. So that, that's what I like to call a a free lunch in our industry. It doesn't happen too much. It doesn't happen. Hey. Danielle, so not only are there asset allocation ETFs is starting with, you know, as you mentioned, the core, the balanced, and the, the growth aspect of the portfolio risk tolerance approaches, but in addition, ETF companies like ourselves have brought some innovation in the marketplace to kind of really align with people's objectives out there. Let's talk about two of the ones that are aligned to objectives, specifically, you know, first of all, the ESG objectives of environmental, social, and governance. And then let's talk after that about the income focused one. Sure. So we saw well, we saw the popularity in asset allocation ETF. So that was something that BMO we brought to market uh, just over three years ago. Uh, and then we, you know, we're really recognizing that growth in ESG considerations for investors uh, wanting to align their investments with their, you know, their social values. So it, it really made sense for us to think about bringing a product to market that brought together uh, these two very, very powerful trends. So we brought to market ZESG, which is our balanced ESG ETF. So this is a 60-40 portfolio. So of course, 60% equities, 40% fixed income. All the underlying ETFs within uh, ZESG, they use a rules-based broad market ESG approach. We use the MSCI um, ESG leaders indices as our kind of our rules base for this. Uh, we think this is a best-in-class approach uh, to access ESG. And what this ends up looking like is the underlying ETFs are portfolios of the leading companies with the highest ESG scores relative to their peers. So this is a broad market approach. And like, what do I mean by broad market? Well, we actually keep the same sector makeup in each region as we do in a regular broad market uh, ETF exposure. And a great example of this is um, the energy sector in Canada. So ESGA, which is the BMO MSCI ESG Canada Leaders ETF, it holds 13% exposure to Canadian energy companies, which basically matches the S&P TSX composite, the broad Canadian equity market. But the, the energy companies in ESGA, these are the highest ranked energy companies in terms of an ESG score, and they're ranked against their peers in the energy sector. Even though the energy sector as a whole might run up against more environmental issues, we see these companies as the leaders in ESG um, against their peers. Um, so with this approach, investors can easily rep replace their broad market exposure with a broad market ESG exposure, maintain that same look and feel as the broad market, but get that really nice ESG overlay that's becoming more and more um, important and top of mind for investors. I'm going to highlight the price. The price does not change. It's still 18 basis points for that management fee. And Kevin, I think this is a very compelling um, price because what you're really getting with an ESG ETF like ZESG is that added quality overlay with the ESG because these companies are doing the best job at avoiding ESG related risks and taking advantage of those ESG opportunities. So a really exciting product that we brought to market just over a year ago. Thanks for that. And then, you know, let's also talk about, you know, people's needs or wants out there for uh, income in a, in a portfolio solution. So talk to us about this too, please. Yeah, this is another um, big, I'm not going to say trend, but investors are really coming to us and looking for income solutions because, you know, in fixed, fixed income with yields so low, a lot of investors are, are looking elsewhere to get uh, that monthly cash flow. So here, the ZMI is actually a ticker that BMO has had for a while. And what we did, we're really proud of this. We were able to um, rebrand it a little bit. We brought it into our asset allocation ETF suite and we lowered the fee. So that was a big thing to match the rest of the suite. This product yields 3.9%. Um, that's an annualized yield. 
those those that cash flow comes monthly, which is really something that investors look for. And we're getting this income um, from both the equity side and the fixed income side. And then we have this 10% hybrid slice that we have in preferred shares and an options-based strategy, which is our ZPay ETF. Um, again, I just want to highlight that fee. So we kept it at 18 basis points. It's a very competitive price because a lot of these underlying ETFs with, within ZMI are, you know, a couple like there's a covered call. We have ZPay. These are actually priced a lot higher if you were to buy them. Uh, as a single ETF, they're about 65 basis points management fee. So uh, a really attractive product for investors out there looking for a single one ticket solution for monthly income. Thanks, Danielle. Now, certainly we're seeing, we talk about portfolio construction. Now we've been talking about, you know, different asset allocation, different mix. The one key thing you're thinking about portfolio construction is it will change over time. If we look back at the 1990s to, to generate a half decent income, you didn't have much risk because you could pretty much do that with 100% fixed income across the board. Now you fast forward, you know, to, the tw to um, 2020 and to build a portfolio with a similar level of income coming from it, yes, you have to take more risk. But the way to mitigate that risk, as Daniel's been saying right off the bat, there is the, the diversification. That's what you're seeing through this mix here and how they work together to bring that risk down. Yes, it's higher than 100% fixed income. Sure. But it is it is risk. It is managers by having diversification across the board. But as the portfolios and time changes, yes, portfolio construction will change too. And what I mean by that too is you can even take a look at an asset allocation ETF, and we'd like to utilize that as kind of a core to somebody's portfolio. Start there. It's a good diversified mix, as we mentioned a few times. And then you yourself, as you decide that you want to have a certain other element you want to bring to the portfolio, maybe even more income, maybe you want to mitigate the risk by some low volatility ETFs, or maybe even bring in individual securities into the basket too. That is another way you can look at your portfolio construction and further tailor it towards your individual needs. Let me talk about that in a little more detail, bringing Danielle in, because one thing we had noticed in the past is that you know, a lot of uh, direct investors keep a lot of money in cash inside their portfolio. So they have some stocks and some individual cash. And so we took a look at that as an approach and we took a look at it as another approach of saying, well, maybe we should take a look at what would that means to have that asset allocation ETF is the core. And hand in hand, we also took a look at a basket of uh, individual equities and some more popular names that people are familiar with. And I think we had some pretty interesting results when you looked at that. Daniel, share us some of the thought, uh, some results you got. Yeah, so when we looked at these three different portfolios, well, what we found from portfolio number one is um, the cash drag. So of course, equity markets have been on a roll. Um, and if you're sitting in cash, you're just not you're just not participating in equity market growth. It's as simple as that. So of course there's no risk there, uh, but zero reward. So that was a huge drag on that portfolio. Now what the stocks did, they they did provide growth. And you can see we tried to pick some stocks here to show all the different sectors. Um, but what they also added was a lot of volatility and a lot more risk. So that was kind of what we found from that portfolio. The all stock portfolio, oh, and I will add the cash portfolio performed uh, the worst over, it was a four year period that we looked at. Now the all stock portfolio, this actually performed the best of the three, but with that came a lot of volatility. It was a very, very bumpy road. Um, and then lastly, portfolio number three, where we use that core satellite approach, or I like to say core and explore. Um, so we had that, that asset allocation ETF and we actually used Z Grow, so 80% equities, keeping that equity uh, portion high, 20% fixed income. And then we added, added the, the five stock portfolio. This portfolio um, didn't perform as well as, as the all stock, but it, it, it was just slightly below. But what you can see now, if I were to graph this out for you, the line is so much smoother because that Z grow, which is full, like so many more stocks, way less volatile profile, really smoothed out the returns. 
And then those equities were able to add a little bit of, of extra growth uh, on the portfolio as well. So it was a very kind of interesting, uh, interesting to look at how all three were to, to perform, but that, that core asset allocation with the explore stocks was a really good method in, in smoothing out um, equity market volatility. Thanks for that, Danielle. And then let's shift gears here now with a focus now on answering some of the core questions that came in this week. Initially, and I'll keep you going here, Danielle, I have an individual here who took the time to ask a question, talk about the inflation as a major concern at the moment, and maybe what's the best ways to protect myself from this rise in inflation. Maybe talk to us a bit about some solutions on the fixed income side and maybe an idea on the equity side too, please. Sure, another very, very popular concern for investors, Kevin, we're seeing so much. And you know, Canada just reported inflation numbers last week was 4.4%, uh, which is quite high and obviously way more than the Bank of Canada's target of just over 2%. So yeah, investors have a cause for concern here. Now there are some products on the market to help mitigate this risk. So on the fifth fixed income side of the portfolio, this is actually the most exposed asset class uh, to inflation. It's the most impacted by rising inflation. So um, you know we recognize that inflation was riding. We recognize this this risk. So we actually brought to market uh, earlier this year, back in January. Um, Z-TIP. So this is a Treasury Treasury Inflation Protected Securities ETF. So these, just like the name says, the securities are protected for um, against inflation. The break-even here is 2.5%. So this is something to monitor. So if you think inflation is going to run hotter than two and a half percent, you're better off in a product like this. We also uh, just add, we put it on the market with a short duration just to eliminate that duration risk as well. So um, Z-TIP, something to look at, looking at tip securities. Um, on the equity side of things, so equities generally are less impacted by inflation, but, but can still be. Uh, there's two kind of areas we look at. Number one, infrastructure. This is a classic uh, kind of asset class within equities that's less impacted by inflation and that's because a lot of these contracts for things like bridges and highways they extend the duration of them is so much longer 25 35 40 years uh, so less impacted by inflation and then dividends as well so because these dividends uh, offer higher income and usually monthly uh, or these stocks are generally better suited in higher inflation uh, environments thanks there danielle Keeping going the same path here, and I'm gonna take this one myself because this is uh, near and dear to my heart. Is there an easy way to hold all the Canadian banks in one ETF? And what's the fee for something like that? Well, good news, yes, there's an ETF that holds all Canadian banks, ticker ZEB from BMO. It's actually been out for more than 10 years. So you can take a look at the history over the whole period of time. It holds six banks and it holds them all equally with that rebalancing that uh, Daniel spoke of before. And the cost structure for that is 25 basis points management fee. So a very attractive cost structure. Keep them going here. Is there an ETF that holds a large percentage of pharmaceuticals interested in looking and participating in the vaccine companies around the world? Daniel, give us the thoughts on that one. Yeah, we have a product, ZGen. So this is our BMO MSCI Genomic Innovation uh, ETF. We did a whole session on this a few months back. So uh, if you're curious to learn more about this ETF, just look that up on our YouTube channel and give it a watch. But why I think this is such a compelling product is that it's really focused on the leading companies who are investing the most in genomic innovations. As we know, mRNA vaccines are thanks to, they're a big genomic innovation. The top holding in ZGen is Moderna. BioNTech is in there as well. Um, but I, I'll highlight that a lot of pharma companies who do make vaccines, so let's say Pfizer, because they're so large, the vaccines haven't impacted their stock price as much as, say, a Moderna, who are their only product right now is the COVID-19 vaccine, or someone like uh, BioNTech. So if you were actually to um, chart out the performance of those three companies, Pfizer's stock performance this year is, is, is much more flat. If you look at Moderna, BioNTech, they're up almost 200%. I think Moderna's over 200% year to date. 
So if you really, really want that pure play on vaccine, mRNA, and all things genomic innovation related, CGen is something I, I'd encourage you to read more about. Thank you for that. One last question, and I'll take this one. Can you please explain how ESG investing works? And again, ESG, environmental, social, and governance. And should the investor expect lower returns because of the socially conscious investment type? And that's the part I want to spend the most time in this question. ESG, we have a whole session on ESG uh, that we did more recently, and that will dive into more detail about how ESG investing works. But the part I want to highlight here is, should you expect to have a lower participation in marketplace? And we've had studies with our partners from MSCI, and our studies from the partners at MSCI show no. You should not expect that. As Daniel mentioned before, when she was talking about the ESG ETF, we have the uh, diversified sectors from inside those ESG ETFs, but really more focusing on companies that are maybe on the good, the great side versus just the good side in the marketplace. So should you expect lower returns? No, you shouldn't expect that. Um, in fact, sometimes you might be able to avoid a company in the future that may have an issue. And usually when a company has an issue, it might have an, uh, have an impact in the stock price. So think about ESG as not just a socially conscious way of investing, but you should, not, you should also think about a way of just um, investing, but not worrying about the overall differences in respective returns in the marketplace. Lots of studies out there for you on that one. Take a look at them out there. And that brings us to a close for this week's session. I will welcome you to come back and join us on October 9th at one o'clock. We're gonna talk about autonomous technology in that session. I have some special guests joining us from MCI and from ARC there too. So look forward to having you there. And to close off, any investments or trading strategies should always be evaluated relative to an individual circumstances. Individuals should seek advice of professionals as appropriate regarding any particular investment. Thank you, have a great week ahead, cheers.